Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we're going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 9 content and playing a team based all around one of my favourite legendary Pokemon, that's going to be Heatran. Not really featured much Heatran on the channel in the entire year that we've been featuring Sword and Shield, so it's finally nice to be able to get it onto the channel and doing some work. And I think in the current climate of Series 9, I think it's a really good pick. Obviously Celesteela, Nihiligo, other things like that that are picking up a lot of usage he try and can come in and do some really good work obviously it's got some big threats as well with that four times weakness to ground so got to be careful around things like garchomp things like landorus um and we've got ways in the team to kind of help out with that of course and uh, one of the main reasons for thunderous in this team was because of the the threat of landorus theory and form with that intimidate uh, and it, you know with the thunderous with the the define ability it kind of punishes your opponent being able to utilize that now we do have the shukaberry on heatran so we can you know at least take one big uh, ground attack especially if we are maxed um, so that really does help us out and creates a little bit of room but um, I think Heatran in general is just a really really great Pokemon so the rest of the team we've got obviously the Thunderous that we've mentioned we've got the uh, a single strike Urshifu as well with the Sash there we've got Gastrodon helps out with the Storm Drain ability amazingly well uh, for Heatran doesn't like water type attacks so that provides a lot of support in that respect and gastrodon not only that but it helps us slow down games as well and gives us an option in trick room to come in and just make it difficult for your opponent to kind of build up that momentum got rillaboom there helps again with those water types that are going to be problematic and also the grassy terrain helps out a bunch with their uh, earthquake that could come out and cause he's trying a lot of issues and uh, the fake out support is invaluable for the entire team and then we round off with grim snarl again it's got the speed control support with scary face there something i'm really in favor of running on Grimmsnarl at the moment I think it's really invaluable and then screen support which is so useful for the rest of the team and just prolonging the longevity and helping them kind of perform as well as they need and uh, and that about wraps up everything as always the the poker piss is down in the description below if you want to check out the details of the actual team build or take it away on showdown and uh, we'll have a couple of games with the team now as we always do and then throw the rental up at the end of the episode so I hope you enjoyed today's episode as always let me know if you've been playing around with Heatran yourselves and Gastrodon on something that's not really seen a great deal in this format but very good utility with that storm drain ability obviously has a hard time with things like rillaboom cartana kicking around at the minute not the pokemon it wants to be going up against the course but it can perform well in the right scenario so without further ado friends let's get into our first match of today okay up first we have a charizard venusaur glastria torkoal dusclops and indeedy team so pretty heavy uh, sun team here with then a trick room switch to that Dusclops and Glastria really threatening team you know a trick room mod in there with the Torco Glastria um, and DD support with the redirection as well and then outside of that you got the Charizard and the Venusaur both Pokemon that are going to benefit from the the drought from that Torco make it very difficult for us to uh, to get uh, any kind of momentum gone but the one thing you could say is Heatran does well against the pr pr pretty much most of this team you got to watch out for the uh, the ground attacks from things like Charizard things like Venusaur, things like Glastria, things like Torkoal, so pretty much everything on the team. But uh, if we can get, you know, big knockouts in return, then it, and it really does help us out a bunch. Um, the other Pokemon to, to highlight here that can do a real good job is obviously Thunderous as well, especially with uh, screen support. Um, you've got to watch out massively, though, from the, um, the Ndidi redirection support and then the Trick Room mod. But I think... <laughs> Do we go with maybe Urshifu here? Could be a nice option. I'm gonna actually go Thunderous, Heatran. I think we go Grimmsnarl. Actually, I'm gonna go Grimmsnarl and then I'm gonna go Heatran. And then I think we bring Urshifu as our last one, I think. It just feels too difficult to bring Gastrodon here with like it's pretty much at, like you know we listed everything with Heatran that has earth like earth attacks and then you could kind of go through the same amount of Pokemon excluding Glastria that have like access to uh, grass type attacks as well which make it difficult for uh, Gastrodon to come in and really do work and especially if the sun's up as well so it's just not going to be doing the damage that we kind of need. Okay, well, we see a pretty passive lead from my opponent going down more of a trick room route, which is fine. Um, so we can set up screens and probably take Thunderous out of the picture here and I think bring in something like Heatran. That's quite a nice switch for us. We've got no way to stop the, the trick room going up, unfortunately. 
Uh, and yeah, we keep a faster mode in the back. And just go for a light screen here. Yeah, and get Heatran onto the field as soon as we can. Got to be careful around the, the old um, Dusclops as well, which makes it a bit more tricky because uh, the Nightshades are going to be able to kind of chip away at us. And it's not ideal. As we see a follow me come out from the Indeedy just protecting that Dusclops while it is going to be setting up the trick room, you would imagine, to get the light screen up. I don't know if it's worth going for a max straight away with, with Heatran, you know. I think it might be worth... Do we need the Reflect up? Has my opponent really got any physical attackers other than... Well, I'm in the Glass Ray, it's definitely one. Um, so... I think just protect here and maybe go for a reflect and we'll see what my opponent does. If they keep the Indeedy on the field, I kind of don't mind this, but yeah, and they, it looks like they're going to, you know. Probably wanting to get rid of the, uh, the Heatran before they do anything else, to be honest. Yeah, Nightshade coming out into Heatran. One of the things we could potentially do is switch into... Ooh, Dazzling Gleam. Not something you really expect to see too much on Ndidi. I was about to say we could potentially bring in Urshifu, but that kind of really makes that a way more difficult thing to do. Um, you know, we could just Heat Wave. And go for a Spread Break, I think. Yeah. Just try and get damage onto the field. Wow, Bulldoze. Getting rid of that Chukka already. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. Um, not something I expected to see on Dusclops, really, because you generally see Bulldoze on teams where it can take advantage of, I guess, Torkoal could have weakness policy, but it's a bit of a stretch, right? You normally see it on things like Rhyperior teams. Um, <laughs> but, okay, that's fine. I kind of prefer that to... Uh, the um the nightshade honestly doing less damage so it gives us another turn to kind of stall these trick room turns out as well i guess you know that's a big thing for us um and i think we just go for another protect here we'll go for a spirit break again into the I think in Didi this time, because it's, it's it's likely we see Pain Split come out from the Dusclops, but does it have that? You've got Trick Room, you've got Nightshade, you've got Bulldoze. Pain Split potentially is its fourth one. And um, as we see an expanded force now coming out from the, the DD. And we'll get a nice Spirit Break into that slot. Not quite picking up the knockout, but that's perfect for us, because I think what we want to do is kind of time this right where we've got like one turn of trick room left but the yeah the dust clops in a position where it's not really going to be able to utilize um too much so we could go for max flare here i think it's not a bad play the only problem is if venusaur comes in then things get a bit more tricky whereas if we just kind of hold off a little bit then we've got the option of thunderous to come in and maybe be the maximum that we want yeah, I think Heat Wave and, and Spirit Break is probably the better option here. I see another Bulldoze come out. It's going to take the DD down. It does a, a, a sizable chunk of damage to a Heatran. But the thing is, what we want to do is get this Dusclops in range to be taken down so it can't set the Trick Room up again. Uh, which makes things a heck of a lot easier for us to kind of close this game out. Okay, Spirit Break. Heat wave probably ooh that crit makes a big difference, you know. Heat wave maybe maybe can get it single target. Yeah, okay, there we go. This club's gone. Trick room ending. That is ideal for us. Now it depends on what my opponent's last Pokemon are. It's I would say Torko Vinu. Maybe. Um It's Glastria. Okay, so, yeah. Not bad if it's Torkoal. Woohoo! <laughs> we like to see that. We like to see it. Um, now, the Glastria is in a, an awful spot right now, but we're not in any great spot ourselves, you know. We've got Light Screen Reflector, which is ideal. Do we flash cannon or do we go? Ah, we have to go Max Flare. We have to go Max Flare. We just got to worry about Protect on Glastria. And then an Earth Power from the Torkoal. I think that's the big, the big thing. 
and better to max mm, no let's just try and get let's just try and weaken the torque if we can a max flare in the sun against glastria it depends if it's a salt fest or not as well i guess but it definitely going to be in range for urshifu to take it down so i think we might be all right i think we might be all right famous last words of course let's see Heatran, it'd be nice to see you get a big knockout this game, of course. You've done it already, the Dusclops. It's a big knockout in my book. It'd just be nicer to see you get the, the Glastria here. I just worry about the Max Guard. Max Guard and Earth Power play. Ah. But, I mean, yeah, what can we do? We can Max Guard ourselves. And allow them to get the hail up. Which is not really... Yeah. No Max Guard, let's see. Come on, Heatran. Show them your power. Oh, nowhere near enough. Glastria is just a monster, right? Max Knuckle. It's a nice option. Not going to be enough to take us down. So if you don't double up into us this turn, you're done. You're done. Um, obviously, without our Shuka, we're kind of in a bad spot. But Spirit Break, what are we going to see? We're not going to see Heat Wave or Eruption, I don't think, here. Unless that's our only option. Got to be Earth Power. Heat Wave. Oh, <laughs> get that flash fire ability procced. We love to see it. Grimmsnarl not even getting touched by that. Spirit Break coming in huge. We're going to be able to knock out the Glass Ray here and just go for another Spirit Break, I think. We might see a Max Guard here. We might see a, a, a forfeit because I think that locks out my opponent. If the Torkoal hasn't got any options to hit this Heatran with, and this is one of the things, you know, where Heatran can be such a good Pokemon. We've got the option as well to go for the Max Steel Spike as well. Well, you could boost defenses, but I don't feel like we're in a, the, a situation where we need to go for that. And it's it's nice to be able to not see Charizard and Venusaur in this match. I think both of those could have played quite decent roles, depending on their sets. Obviously, Charizard gets Scorch and Sands, Venusaur gets Earth Power. So, it can make things quite difficult for us. But uh, thankfully, it's all worked out pretty well in the end. My opponent went like pretty hard on their Trick Room mod. And I think the thing, like, we want to do in that situation is what we didn't really do was press them with a knockout to allow them to get something in, like the glass rate in the trick room, which would have made it very difficult for us to kind of function. You know, that's, I think that's one of the, the big things what you want to do. Uh, did we go Max Quake? Yeah, why not? Why not? And, um, yeah, just being able to kind of keep that Indeedee on the field and them not wanting to make a switch into something else. Um to take advantage of those trick room turns it made it very easy for us and just allowing us to kind of get rid of the trick room set out when as and when uh, the trick room changed so yeah very good game to my opponent nice one for us to kick off with and we'll jump straight into game two of today's episode next up we have tyranitar draco vish celesteela reggie eleki incineroar and grimmsnarl so we've probably got that sand call between tyranitar and draco vish draco vish running its hidden ability sand rush uh getting the double speed boost whenever the sand storms on the field which is provided by that tyranitar and then you've got celesteela as well which kind of pairs nicely with tita uh got a lot of synergy there uh between the two um reggie alecki probably going to be the more i guess probably one of the speed control methods on my opponent's team you're probably looking at like scary face on grim snarl electro web on the alecki and then you've got obviously airstream on the celesteela uh gonna be a tricky team to play around of course dracovish makes things difficult for us but we do have the gastrodon it makes things a lot easier in that respect and my opponent doesn't really have that many ways to hit the gastrodon for good damage i think the big thing for us is that that celesteela that could cause us all sorts of issues i think if we go grim snarl as a lead because i think the screens are going to be quite important for us here um Grimmsnarl, did we lead Thunderous? Because I, I, I fully expect Tyranitar to come out as a lead, you know. Um, yeah, let's go that, because we can even make a switch into Gastrodon, and then what do we need as a kind of a backup? Do we want Heatran in this match? I think Heatran can be quite good late game. Um, yeah, yeah, let's go Heatran. Because it can be good against the, the, the Celesteela. I pointed that out at the start of the episode, so I've got to bring it in the Celesteela match, I guess. Well, I think... Rillaboom could have been just as good, you know. But then Rillaboom has to watch out for things like Celesteela. It doesn't like going up against Celesteela one little bit. And it doesn't like Incineroar either. The Intimidate Cyclone's not ideal. 
Uh, okay, well, we kind of expected this lead, but this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. This is actually fine. This is, like, so fine. Because we've got a few options here. I mean, will I max? Uh, are they going to max Titar here? That's the big issue for us, of course. Uh, we're going to reflect, and we're not going to take any big risks here. We're just going to play it nice and easy. We've got no risk coming into this one and just get Gastrodon onto the field and just prevent that Dracovish from doing very much. I mean, he can go for like Psychic Fangs, of course, that is an option, but it's a bit risky considering that we do have two dog types on our team. Um, but they could do that totally to get rid of our screens. It is something that Dracovish does, does play. I don't know if they're going to go for the Vicious Ren though, are they? Super Fang, there we go, that's what we like to see. Not really what we like to see, of course, in a rock slide coming out. But that's fine. Uh, because we can go for a Spirit Break the next turn uh, onto the Dracovish and just go for a recover with uh, with Gastrodon. Uh, we should be able to take whatever the T-Tor kind of throws out of us, unless it does max, but then that kind of... Yeah, I think what my opponent's going to do is go hard after this Gastrodon now, knowing that, that it's really preventing the Dracovish from being able to do very much. See, a substitute setup from the Dracovish, which is nice, a nice option from it. So that pretty popular at the back end of... Um, ooh, we see a Taunt come up from the T-Tor. Nice as well. My favorite text on Tito. It's a throwback to 2014 for you. Um, all right. Well, we take the sub down with the uh, the Vish. And we are going to get a recover off. Now, I think we protect the next turn and just go for another Spirit Break. Protect Gastrodon because we don't want to take another uh, Super Fang. Um, and the Tito, I think, will be tied up going for a Taunt. Yeah, and I think the Dracovish is like in that pin position where it has to go substitute or it goes down. But they could get greedy and go for it. Well, it's not greedy almost. It's just going after the Gastron. We haven't revealed Protect yet. We revealed Recover, so they might be thinking, let's get another Super Fang onto it. Let's taunt it, prevent it from going for another Recover. And then we're in a good spot to kind of get rid of it after that uh, with maybe Titar or something. But if they do that, Ooh, Tito gonna switch out, so no possibility of a taunt coming out anymore, which is fine by me. Uh, Celesteela coming onto the field, okay, and a protect. All right. Um, Celesteela not gonna outspeed Gastro on though, is it? I don't think. It's not like straightforward though this match, you know. It really isn't, and I think the next thing to consider is what does a Celesteela? I mean. Could bring Heatran in. It's a bit risky though. I think the Celesteela goes for Max Steel Spike into Grimmsnarl. Could go for Max Airstream though as well. That's the big issue. Uh, into. Mm. Okay. Let's go for Spirit Break. Do we just play a real, real, real big play here? And expect them not to go for the they're not gonna go vicious rend they're no way gonna go for vicious rend but i could see them going airstream into that slot which you know gastrodon's not gonna want to take Ooh, super fang misses oh that is unfortunate that is unfortunate oh, flash cannon now will take us down okay but this is all right because we get gastrodon back onto the field now uh, and Thunderous in a spot where it can do some real big damage to that, that Celesteela. Um, the big problem for us would be, obviously, if it goes for the Meteor Beam. But do you bank on it being a Salt Fest? Potentially. Potentially. Let's have a look at their team. That's what would make sense. Yeah, I don't know if you go with Power Herb here, because I don't think you need it with the T-Tar. I feel like you probably go Assault Vest more than anything else. I'm going to bank on Assault Vest. Let's go for Max Lightning into the Celesteela. Yeah. Let's see. It may have been better going Max Airstream into the Dracovish here, because it could go Serp, of course. But the Sand's going to run out soon. And then we can kind of ply and force the T-Tor back onto the field if you're going to want to utilize that. And I kind of locked up utilizing uh, the Super Fang all the way. And they're really going to be...
focusing down and wanting to get rid of something like the gas around here. We've got to watch out, of course, as well for Max Rockfall, you know? Can't underestimate that. That is going to be a big attack that's come, going to come out from the Celestia. It's plus one. Can do some big damage. But you just got to hope that it kind of chases down uh, the Gastrodon more than anything else. Okay, no protect from the, the Dracovish. Let's see. Super Fang. Yeah. Are they going to chase it down? Double in? Come on. Please double in. This is going to hurt because we're Life Orb. So one more of those will do the trick. But a max airstream uh, complicates things a little bit. Not too much though, I don't think. Let's see what we see. Is it a rock fall? No, it's an airstream. It's going to be into Gastrodon. Nice. Okay, that's ideal. That's ideal. Because now we get rid of the Celesteela the next turn. Perfect. We recover off any uh, super fang damage and we're sitting in a decent spot to stop this uh, Dracovish although we've got to start attacking the Dracovish at some point you know as well uh, I, I do think we recover with Gastrodon though because it is pretty important to us uh, yeah and go for the max lightning okay so no max rockfall that turn and my opponent kind of going all in hard on the Gastrodon there now if we hadn't protected we, we would have definitely lost it now that's a nice play from my opponent going for the sub in this situation uh, but it does give us a free recover, which is also very nice. And then we can go for, yeah, Earth Power, Max Knuckle into the t -tar. And hope the t is not sashed. And hope the t is not weakness policy. Well, I mean, if it's if it's not sashed, it goes down to a Max Knuckle, 100%. There's no way it takes that. And the recover, really useful for us here. Because there's no way the Dracovish beats Gastrodon one-on-one. -on -one. So all we need to really do, if we're thinking about an end game right now, is get Gastrodon versus Dracovish, and there's no way they beat that. Like, no way. Um, it's just about whether the Max Knuckle can take down this, this T-Tar here. That would be the big thing. But we could potentially double in to it, you know, Max Knuckle and Earth Power. It's just tricky though, isn't it? No, it's not. It's not, because if they're Sash, then they're not doing enough damage to Gastrodon. <laughs> And if their weakness policy, they go down. There's a super fine. Okay. Let's see. Max Knuckle. Is it going to be enough? Let's see. Oh, it's sashed. They're sashed. Okay. So this is all right. Yeah, they're sashed. This is why I go on into the double up there. It's fine. They may take us down. Oh, do they take us down with the rock slide? We've got to reflect up still. Probably not. Oh, they go Taunt. Even better. That allows Thunderous a bit more room this next turn. Although, if it is a Lecky coming out last... I mean, if it's a Lecky coming out last, we're we're, we're super fine. Because they've got literally no way to beat us. Unless they've got Hyper Beam, potentially, on a Lecky. Which then could complicate things a little bit more. Okay, well. Is that our last turn with Thunderous as well? It is a Lecky. All right. Oh, there we go. Um, could fly. Come fly. Uh, I'm not going to start this, the Fang Sinatra. I promise. Um, yeah, we, I mean, we just follow what we've been doing. We get to go after the Aleki here. Um, and I think... We just, no, nah, we just wild charge the Dracovish if we've got the opportunity. Because the Earth Power is going to get the Regieleki, no problem. We just see the cancel, so there we go, friends. We do pick up a win, which is great. I don't think the end game would have been as straightforward as what my opponent's making, but they probably didn't see a way out against the Gastron at that point, which is fair enough. But very good game to my opponent. We get to see the team doing some work. We get to see the Heatran do some work in that first one, and then we also get to see the Gastron come in and do some work, which is always really nice, you know. Uh, it's one of those Pokemon that's kind of either very good in games or very bad in games and generally the ones that you can bring it to it does perform very well so it's uh, it's an awkward pokemon so i'll hop over now and get you that rental card friends here is today's rental team i hope if you do try it out you have a lot of fun with it heatran definitely one of the more 
like fun Pokemon to play I think at the moment in the format obviously we didn't really get to see too much of that flash cannon kind of building up that defense with the heatran and just becoming a real awkward Pokemon to deal with after that um, and there are a lot of possibilities as well with heatran obviously sitting there next to something boosting the defenses like Tapu Fini could be a nice option there like you've seen with a lot of other team kind of strategies in the past you know we saw it with Dialga Tapu Fini you boost the defenses up on Tapu Fini get a couple of calm minds up and then it becomes a very difficult Pokemon to deal with so there's lots of combinations there that we haven't actually featured today but in this team in general i think it's a really nice build so if you do try it out i hope you have a lot of fun with it and uh, remember let me know down in the comment section if you have been playing around with heatran or gastrodon even uh, in this format and you've uh, you've found some kind of nice grounding with with both of those and you've been enjoying playing them but uh, i'll not drag this on any longer friends thank you so much as always for tuning in hope you've enjoyed today's episode and we'll be back very soon with another team to feature here on the channel so until then take care of yourselves and bye bye